a serious note, if you don't know what you're doing, please don't work in a high voltage environment. It can only end badly. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I'm Amtech Ron and welcome back to my Amp Lab, where we take an objective look at what's really going on under the hood of your music gear. And hopefully it can help you achieve some better tone and sounds. It's been a while since I did my first video, Understanding Distortion Part 1. And if you haven't seen it, I'd advise you to go check it out because we're going to take this next one, Part 2, here in a similar fashion in the way that we explore and compare these things. But I'll briefly summarize. Uh, the first part, we learned that total harmonic distortion is simply whole number multiples of the frequencies we put into an amp multiplied, you know, times two, three, four, five, or whatever. The even numbers being even harmonics, obviously, and the odd ones being odd harmonics. And when we tested out amps, we found that solid state amps typically, when overdriven, put out odd order harmonics, and they diminish in amplitude the higher they go. So three will be the highest, five will be the next so on down like that. In testing out tube amps, we found that they react in a similar fashion, except that, uh, especially in lower total harmonic percentages, we see a lot more uh, proportions of even order harmonics, two, four, six, etc., like that. And um, according to guitar lore, this is what makes these amps sound superior. Is that true or not? I don't know, because that's the subjective part of this. We can measure this, but we can't prove it's better, right? <clears throat> well, since the time that I did that first video, I haven't been idle, friends. <laughs> no, in fact, I'm going to try to summarize this rabbit hole of analysis I fell into without it becoming the diary of a madman. And this may be difficult because this is the story of my descent into the world of the most common yet most subjective of guitar effects, other effects as well, the diode clipping circuit. Hang out with me and we're going to take a look at this. Diodes are unique electronic components and they have some unique qualities that we utilize quite often and rectifying and distortion circuits. But before we, we get into the deep dive on those, let's discuss uh, my first test in my first video where we tested a solid state and a tube amp. Um, briefly, these were testing systems. The solid state amp has a lot of solid state circuits in it that all summarize into the sound of that and how it distorts and everything. Same thing with the tube amp. So we're testing the totality of the amp. Well, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different because the diode uniquely has a clipping quality that we use in distortion circuits. And so today we're going to be testing the different qualities that different diodes play in these circuits. And um, to be honest with you, I didn't think there'd really be much difference between these. I'm kind of skeptical as most technicians should be. You know, every amp manufacturer in the world claims their solid state amps sound like a tube amp. That's not true. They can sound good, but you know, I can prove on my equipment that they do not sound like one. So moving on. Um, most stomp boxes and rack mounted distortions you see, they use a diode clipping circuit. And as you see here in front of me, uh, D1 and D2 are just simple diodes, a pair of them in opposite polarity that are tapped into the hot of a circuit where you put a sine wave in and the other end is tied to ground. And they call this a clipping circuit because the diodes have a quality called a forward voltage. And any AC voltage you put in above this forward voltage 
will be clipped off. So in this example here on the upper left, we see like, we'll call this a two volt sine wave put in there. And the little dotted lines, we'll call that our forward voltage area of these diodes, which means you put in on the left end of this circuit and on the right hand side, there is what you get. You see the top of the waveforms are clipped off. And it doesn't always look this neat. You know, we combine this with an EQ circuit and you have your basic stomp box for distortion. You know, there's different diodes and the forward voltages that these diodes have, you know, range from point theory, from germanium diodes up to, I've seen some LEDs with two volts or more. And like I said, I thought that they would all have real similar sounds and everything because they're similar devices, but this is not true. And therefore this is the rabbit hole I fell into testing these things. And now I will show the madness to you. All right, so what do we need in a distortion box or overdrive pedal or whatever it is that you get this harmonic distortion from? I'm going to show you a super simplified kind of circuit here, where basically you have an input, say, from a guitar, and then the output goes to your amp there. You know, a real circuit has a lot more than this, but this will give you the basics for guys that aren't engineers or or I have a formal electronic tra training here. And I'll show two different kind of uh, volume and gain circuits that you typically see in stomp boxes and stuff. You know, what you need for a stomp box is, you know, your input from your guitar, you gotta boost that up because you need a variable volume because that's what you run over these diodes. And if you run, you know, a volume in volts, it's lower than their forward vol volume for, <laughs> forward voltage, you're not going to get any distortion because it doesn't go over the top of that. But as you raise that, more and more that waveform gets clipped until you have essentially, you know, what looks like a square wave. And this will go into another circuit, your master volume circuit, because we all know you raise your gain, the volume goes up. So you have to match these for unity gain and you throw in an EQ circuit. But for our purposes, we're going to omit the EQ because it just will color our sound. We want to test the sound of the diodes and not anything else. So this is your kind of thing here. And I'm going to show you how my test rig is going to reproduce this with the minimum amount of coloration other than the diodes we put in there. And we're going to try a couple different diodes that I've seen in pedals and plus a unique little thing that I kind of found that, you know, made some unique things on the scope here and perhaps it's musically useful. Let's find out. Alrighty, here we have a look at the schematic of my test jig here. And you can see it over there on the left. Basically, uh, I'm using my signal generator uh, it goes from 0 to 24 volts to basically we tap into that with some different diodes there on the five-way switch and that's set up to go to a super clean amplifier which drives the load and everything and we can see the harmonics and the distortion and everything and analyze it. Uh, I got the five-way switch there so I could test the different kind of diodes and hopefully switch them back and forth. Uh, it didn't work out quite the way I thought because they have different forward voltages. I mean, sometimes I have to adjust uh, the gain on the scope there because some ample, some waveforms are bigger than others. But you definitely see a difference in the harmonic content, which kind of surprised me. But like I said, we've got the little schematic here that shows you the kind of thing there. And... Um, you guys out there that want to build your own distortion boxes and everything, I would encourage you to do something like this. You know, if you're using diodes in the circuit, have a little way you can substitute them out or, or a little switch there where you can switch between different diodes and let your ears, you know, decide because I can measure all these differences 
on my test gear and stuff, but translating that to how good it sounds is difficult sometimes, really. It's impossible, maybe, you know. You have to just really plug in and listen to it, but, you know, like I said, skeptical as I was, different diodes definitely have different kind of responses, so depending on what you're going for, it may behoove you to try some different combinations. And, uh... That's what we're going to do here. So what I have is uh, three different ones to show you here. Uh, the thing there, uh, I have a pair of 1N4001, just common rectifier diodes, the black and silver ones you'll see, and practically every amp out there acting in the rectifier circuit with uh, some capacitors and stuff and the power supply. Um, you also see the same kind of versions of those. You know, they call them signal diodes. They're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. Uh, that's one pair there. And then the next pair I have is just a standard pair of red LEDs. You may think, you know, what are red LEDs? But uh, actually in a lot of the Marshall valve states and stuff like that and some stomp boxes, uh, these LEDs have a reputation for sounding good. Uh, the chemical makeup in them and everything, I, I guess, does that. So I have a pair of those. And then finally, um, we all hear talk about, oh, asymmetric distortion and everything. Um, you know, there's so many myths and what sounds great, the Holy Grail. So I tried to recreate asymmetric distortion, you know, with different pairs of diodes. They have different, you know, forward voltages. And I tried a bunch of different things, and this was the pair that I thought, you know, seemed pretty cool on the test gear. I haven't tried it in a real, you know, situation, but here for discussion. It's a 1N914 diode paired with just a blue LED. So we're going to compare all these things and see how they generate harmonic distortion. Hopefully we'll all learn something. All right, our test equipment today is exactly like we used in our first distortion video. On top, we have an oscilloscope that shows us the shape of the sine wave we put in it. Below that, we have an audio analyzer that shows us the frequency is just a hair below one kilohertz there. And at a total harmonic distortion of 0.76%, which is the residual distortion of the amplifier I have driving the signal there. Uh, that's next to nothing. And finally, on the bottom, we have the spectrum analyzer that shows us the frequency content of these signals. Right now, everything's working wonderfully, like a clean app is supposed to. And all we see there to the left is our big signal there that we're putting into it it's off the scale there so we're not interested now we know it's there we're looking for the harmonic content there so we're going to start running our different diode configurations into this and seeing how they react let's take a peek first up in our test is the 1N4001 rectifying diode simple uh, component that you'd see in a million amps usually uh, in the power supply but not off not uncommon in a clipping circuit so here we have uh, the residual distortion of the amplifier is about 0.7 percent so anything over that is the diode so let's see what it does let's bring the gain up a little bit start seeing we have one percent harmonic distortion, 3%. Well, here at around 10%, we see uh, the largest is a third order harmonic, but we see a sizable second as well. Second order is uh, octave. As we hit 15%, the third order overtakes the second. We start seeing all the others are kind of a distant. More than that, 20%, we start seeing the fourth and fifth order. Bring it up. 
there's 25% we see, you know, still a lot of second and fourth order, uh, but predominantly third and fifth, smaller sixth and sevenths. Let's just max this out. Once we start getting up into the higher voltages, it almost becomes a square wave. And we see the out order harmonics completely taken over and even one shrinking there. And we have a maximum of 37% total harmonic distortion. And that's what it looks like. Uh, next up, this is the red LEDs. Like I said, this may seem unusual, but it's not. Uh, Marshall has had them and several other pieces of gear, and I've seen them in stomp boxes as well. Let's check them out. We'll raise the gain up. Okay, at about 10% distortion here. We see um, pretty much what we saw in the last one. We see a sizable second order and a third. As we approach 20% there, uh, the third is about twice as big. And we see some fourth and fifth, but not much else. And we hit 30%, and as you see there, we see some small even order numbers, but you know, mostly the third and the fifth. And we max it out at as well as about 37%. And we see almost exactly the same configuration there. Uh, Odd order ones descending in amplitude, smaller second. You know, when we sweep it there, looks like there's a could be a sweet spot. Let's see the next one. All right, and finally today we have a combination that I discovered. Just I was looking for an asymmetric pair, something that two different forward voltages, two different clipping, you know, uh, characteristics just tied together. I tried a bunch of different combinations, but finally this seemed the most dramatic. It's a 1N914 coupled with a blue LED, which has a much higher forward voltage. So let's take a look at those and see what's going on. There at 5% we notice, wow, the predominant one is the second, followed by the third, fourth, fifth. That's kind of interesting. Let's bring it up. And you notice the waveform up in the oscilloscope too. The bottom half of the wave shows some rounded off clipping while the top doesn't. That's our asymmetric part of the diodes there. You know, one clipping at a lower voltage the other. And that becomes even more apparent as we bring it up. Now at about 10%, we can see this crazy second order harmonic there, uh, followed by the third, fourth, faint, fifth, and sixth ones at 10% distortion. Bring the scale down a bit. Bring it up to about 15%, still predominantly second. That's really amazing to me. And it's not till we hit about 20% there where we can see the third is about equal to the second and everything distant past that. And then as we go up 25% and everything, as we see in every other distortion box or amplifier, once we get to a certain level, you know, the odd orders are going to start coming up. As we see there, the fifth is about even now at 30% distortion with the second. But we still have a sizable fourth there. We'll bring it out. We'll max it out there. That's as distorted as it's going to get. You know, we still see that second, you know, showing there. But the rest is taken over, which is what we expect. But still kind of a 
a unique combination. I'm going to go back through the harmonic or the spectrum analyzer there, show it to you again. Seven or eight percent, fifteen percent, twenty five percent, thirty percent, thirty five percent. Interesting, huh? So what's our takeaway on our experiments today? Well, there's a couple. First and foremost that, that we saw here was uh, surprisingly these different diodes and the combination delivered up uh, what my test gear says is um, pretty similar to some tube type distortion. There was a lot more even order harmonics in there than I expected to see. You know, of course, once you get above a certain level of distortion, they become dwarfed out by the odd order ones, but that is just the way that it goes. So kind of surprisingly, um, yeah, you know, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but at the same time, we got to kind of take this too and remember what I told you about components versus systems. Uh, the greatest distortion box in the world that you fine-tuned and EQ'd and everything is not going to help you in your system if you have a single piece of crap. Uh, amplifier, certain effect, whatever. There, There's a million ways your tone can go bad, but there's only one way it can be good, and that's have everything in your chain be quality and contributing to your tone and, and be set up right. So... Um, I was originally going to test some germanium diodes with this too. They didn't come in the mail fast enough. Uh, I will test them and perhaps post another video later if there's anything real and exciting and everything. But I hope you guys uh, got something out of this. Those of you that are more ambitious than me can probably take this kind of info here and set up your own kind of jig where if you're building your own distortion box or want to modify it or something, uh, make it so that you can swap out the diodes in them and try. You know, the ear is the ultimate judge uh, for tone, the subjective part of it. Uh, my test equipment is the absolute judge of what's really going on there, but, you know, your ears are really the final arbiter. I hope you like this. It, it took me a lot of research and everything, but I enjoyed every minute, and I got more stuff coming up for you guys, so I appreciate you hanging out with me here in the Amp Lab, and Please come back.